So we're here in front of the strawberry bed and I need to move these strawberries before it starts getting any warmer. Uh, they're starting to get green on them. Um, if I move them before, they'll be all right, but they're going to lag. So that's what we got to do today. Move these strawberries to their own bed so we can have some delicious strawberries this summer. Let's get it. I hope y'all can hear me. Uh, I am literally shouting. Uh, apparently everyone decided not to have a muffler on their vehicle today, so that's what we're dealing with. There's another one. Yeah, buddy. Who needs a muffler, right? I gotta get these strawberries in. Uh, I've got the mic in, so hopefully you guys can hear that. I am shouting. I'm sure I will have to change all of this audio, but thus the joys of living on a very populated road i hope one day we get a piece all the way out in nature where the only thing y'all are gonna hear are the bullfrog farts during the spring but other than that we got this bed to um, amend a little bit i'm gonna throw some fertilizer in it and get the strawberries over here because they're starting to wake up and we need to transplant them so there's absolutely no point in amending the soil and putting soil on without getting rid of the weeds. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has trouble with it. Uh, I think it's called Creeping Charlie if I remember correctly, but my gosh is it annoying. It, one little piece, that's all it takes and it'll, it'll take over a whole garden. So I'm, the best you can do is try to get the rhizome up as much as possible and you know, just stay on top of it during the summer months because if you let it go it just becomes more of a pain in the butt to get rid of later i'm gonna come through here and sometimes raking it like this you can pull up a lot of it this bed i've been slowly prepping for strawberries for a couple years and a lot of uh and sand to it small pieces of gravel this is a wetter area of the garden so my hope with it is because the soil will stay somewhat wet but it's very well draining that will produce a lot bigger berries this year because it'll have that constant uh source of water well, on top of me watering it of course but this is just a lower section of the garden so it stays a bit more wet well, you can see I'm going through here and I'm just mixing in these leaves. It's a good little source of extra nitrogen. I like a bunch of different composts. I've used them all. Uh, black cow's nice. I do like the uh, the garden grow because it has sand. It has like sand and small pebbles in it, which in my case is what I want because I want that extra aeration of soil for the strawberries and if I don't if I don't get that then especially where the roots are they're gonna end up rotting out and they're just not gonna be happy I've also got a bag of stay grow We're just gonna rake and mix that all together. And if I see any chunks that I wasn't able to break up with the shovel or the rake, I just go through with my hands and break them up. So the one thing about strawberries uh, is they're just like peppers. I think I mentioned this in another video. They benefit a lot from plastic. 
So if you can put them on plastic, it just helps them out so much more. You can get that soil warmed up a lot faster and it just gets them picking up real quick. So if you get them on plastic or even weed barrier, you know, so I know some people don't like to use plastic. Uh, I understand that. The, uh, the biodegradable plastic, it's a little bit high dollar. Well, that's a little rich for me too, but I do use weed barrier. I try to reuse it as much as I can, but we all know how that is. One thing you want to stay away from is mulching. Uh, you do not want to mulch, especially with straw or wood chips. Uh, slugs love, absolutely love strawberries. So if you mulch, what you're doing is you're allowing, you're giving a place for those slugs to live and breed and just kind of hang out during the day and stay cool and moist while they wait for sunset to come out and uh, eat all your strawberries. That's why a plastic or just a weed barrier on top is good. So the strawberry variety I have growing in here um, is called Seascape. It's actually a hybrid. There may be a few Ozark Beauties in here, but it's primarily Seascape. It's a very good uh, day neutral strawberry and it produces midsummer all the way into fall. And all I'm doing here is I'm looking for those strawberry roots. Just kind of trying to pull them up here. And you can see this is a newer plant. So if you look here, see how this is the old crown? And then off of it, there's a piece of bee balm. Off of it is this new plant right here. There's the old crown that may produce something. I'll go through here. It may have gotten, yep. All right, so what you do is, let me see if I can get this here. To tell if a crown is still good, you don't want to dig right into it because if you really mess, mess up the rhizome here, it'll be a problem. But I just rub on the side a little bit and you can see this is still healthy growth. So this is still a viable plant. Granted, the roots don't look the greatest, but you can see a lot of newer white growth on, where is it? There it is. You can see a lot of newer white growth on the roots. So there is still some life in this plant. We'll see what it produces. And then we have a, a baby here. I think they're called sisters if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's two plants. We're gonna go through here and pull them all out and get them planted up. These are all strawberries. I have a lot of them. 
let's go through picking out some good ones and plant only the good all ones. All right. So here's our pile of strawberry rhizomes, amongst other things, old bee balm heads. Uh, what you want to do, like that little guy's sad. Focus. All right, probably over. This little guy's sad, but there is a sign of life. So I might slap him in somewhere, get him going. A lot of these are babies. This is what you want here. This is a double crowner. It can't actually be divided. But one way to divide uh, strawberry crowns is you can see there's two rhizomes here. And if I pull, they're slowly starting to come apart. You just want to do that. You'll hear a little bit of cracking. And just pop. There it is. See, so now you have two strawberries. These strawberries will produce well. This one especially. It's got a really nice crown to it. Um, it's a more mature rhizome. So this is going to be a good producer. This one's probably on its second year. You can tell by the growth. Um, I, second or third year. Judging by the growth, I'd, I'd probably say second. This will be this one's first year of growth. This will not produce very well. Uh, this is a future plant. A lot of people will just throw these out, but this is a baby. Um, this is a runner. Typically, if you want your plants to produce well, you cut off the runners, but last year I was kind of preparing for this garden, so I wanted to get as many of these runners as possible so I could increase my crop later on in the future. But we're gonna go through and select only the three-year-olds, if I can help it, the three-year-olds and up. But, you know, we'll probably get some two-year-olds also. Let's get to it and see how it does. We're probably not going to put them all in this bed here because they do need some spacing. But these are the strawberries we're going to use. Let's get that weed barrier on and start poking some holes. So I've got some uh, old plastic I used last year. I actually used this to help heat up beds early summer, early summer, uh, early spring. So I would lay these on the beds and they would heat up and the seeds underneath would germinate a lot faster, but I can, I'll use it for this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my knife and I'm just getting the bed laid out with some overlap. And I take the overlap to the edge here. Take the edge of the paper, or excuse me, take the edge of the uh, landscape fabric, bring it to the edge of the timber. I take my knife and I push it in. Just like making like a just like making a bed. And I go I'm gonna go around the entire outside, pushing in on the edges. The fabric doesn't have to be super tight, but I kind of like it a little bit tighter as I go. So that's the first step on laying weed fiber for me. If you don't want to do it this way, you can always get the landscape stakes, but it's just another thing laying around. And I prefer this method a little better. So now that I have my bed laid out, Be gone, millipede. I will measure six inches or whatever this is out to here and get my corner. I will measure out to here and get my corner here. And this will be the start of my first strawberry.
So usually all what I do is I'll just heat up just the very tip of this and just push it into the hole. Hopefully you can see it from here. So when you're planting the crown, use this board here as the soil. You want it just like this. You want the crown above the soil. You want the rhizome and the roots below the soil. You do not want to bury this crown. You don't want it sticking up like this either. So there's your, here's your soil layer. See how there's all these roots? You don't want that. You want to get these roots down underneath, just like this, to where just your crowns are sticking up. And it does take some maintenance and careful watching on your part, because during heavy rains and things of that nature, the uh, rhizomes could easily get covered up. And then once I get them in there, I'll just pinch around the soil, create a little divot. That's our first strawberry in for our new bed. We're going to go on through and get her done. So we've got two thirds of the bed planted up. This last third over on the far side here is going to be for basil. I'm gonna put some basil tight and then calendula a little further out. And that'll just kind of help uh, bring in some more uh, beneficial insects to this area here. I'm gonna be doing basil on the uh, ground area here below and that's it. We'll check back once everything's been grown here in a little bit, probably a month or so, and we can update as it goes. Remember, the compost is already in there, so that'll start degrading. But really, once it starts flowering, you want to pull off some of the first flowers there are until you start getting a lot more consistent flowers all together. Then start leaving them on. Once those berries ripen, get, get pulling them off. Once you see runners, start cutting runners. That keeps the main energy in the uh, single plant itself. Hope everyone enjoyed this and found something educational. If you have any questions or comments, shoot them down below in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Maybe share it with a friend who loves strawberries and has wanted to grow them. Gotta go, gotta grow.